May the peace of the Lord be with you all. As we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Come, let us now listen to the Word of God. September 15, 2024 Our Lady of Sorrows A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard, I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced, therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame, he who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I love the Lord, because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The snares of death encompassed me, the pangs of Sheol laid hold on me, I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord, O Lord, I pray, save my life. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple, when I was brought low, he saved me. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. The Word of the Lord A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Mark Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan! For you are setting your mind not on divine things but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples, and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake, and for the sake of the gospel, will save it. The Gospel of the Lord Gospel Reflection Practically speaking, how do we follow Jesus and save our souls? Is it enough to profess that we believe in Jesus? 
If we were to arrive at the conclusion that Jesus is God and the Savior of the world, would we then be saved? Certainly not. Even the demons believe this truth. Jesus is quite clear that salvation requires action on our part. We must deny ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow him. Furthermore, the road to salvation requires that we lose ourselves for the sake of Christ and the gospel. What exactly does this mean, practically speaking? To answer this question, let's first consider the way that many people live. We tend to desire that which is the easiest in life, the most enjoyable, the greatest, and the most consoling. We often seek out those things that make us feel good and the path of least resistance. For example, if you could choose to fast on bread and water or feast on the most delicious foods, which would you choose? If you could choose between a vacation in the most exotic and luxurious location or a week of very difficult work, which would you choose? If you could choose to drive a brand new, high-end car or a very old beater, which one would you prefer? Most people would quickly pick the nice food, luxurious vacation and fancy new car. In his spiritual classic, The Ascent to Mount Carmel, Saint John of the Cross outlines a very different path. He gives a series of spiritual maxims to use for prayer and meditation to help purify your soul of every unhealthy attachment so that you can become more fully attached to God and His holy will. Saint John says, Strive always to prefer, not that which is easiest, but that which is most difficult, not that which is most attractive, but that which is most unpleasant, not that which gives most pleasure, but rather that which gives least, these spiritual maxims, when read in their entirety, challenge us to the core of our being. They quickly reveal to those who are honest that they often prefer the easiest, most pleasant and best that this world has to offer. But what is best for your eternal soul? Jesus' teaching, that we must deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him, is the road map to saving your eternal soul and to discovering a spiritual fulfillment that far surpasses anything this world or our flesh have to offer. But in order to understand this road map and then to follow it, we often need to make a spiritual U-turn, so to speak. This U-turn begins with us choosing the cross on every level of our being and concludes with God stripping away all selfish desires and replacing them with a desire for sacrificial love. If you were to carefully examine your thoughts throughout the day, you might find that you think about yourself a lot. I like this, don't want to do that, am angry about this, and am trying to avoid that, very often, our thoughts begin with, I, and end with, me. Denying yourself, taking up your cross, and losing your life means that you no longer think about yourself. It means that the eyes of your soul have turned away from yourself and focus exclusively upon the will of God and the love of others. But this will never be possible until we are freed of the numerous selfish desires that often direct most of our actions day in and day out. Reflect, today, upon that which you desire throughout your day. What occupies your thoughts the most? What are you drawn to the most? Do you spend most of your day thinking about how you can better serve God and His holy will? Or do you spend most of your day thinking about yourself? Do the eyes of your soul most often turn to the selfless service of others? Or do they more often think about what you want in a selfish way? Reflect upon these difficult questions and seek to eradicate everything within you that is selfish. Doing so will enable you to make a spiritual U-turn so that you can carry the glorious and transforming cross of Christ. Let us pray. My sacrificial Lord, you lived a selfless life in which your only concerns were the glory of the Father in heaven and the salvation of the world. Please free me from all selfishness so that I will be more able to deny myself in every way, run toward every cross in life, and follow you into the beautiful life of selfless and sacrificial love. 
Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share it with your friends and family, so that they may also be blessed as you are. May God bless you.